Hey everybody, it's Rabbit, and today we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the custom loadout system in War Thunder because the custom loadout system is both fun and interesting to use, but also is getting pushed down to lower and lower BR planes. Now, the first part of this video is just going to focus on the basics of how to use the custom loadouts, create, edit, all that good stuff, uh, including both planes and helicopters. The second part of the video is going to focus on looking at the spawn costs of different weapons in case you want to know what a cheap or expensive loadout looks like and spoiler the spawn system is both smarter and dumber than you think it is it's not quite as straightforward as you probably think and of course the first and obvious question how do you know if it has custom loadouts and the easiest way to tell if it's a plane you don't own like a premium or a plane you're working towards in the tech tree bottom left hand corner of the uh, loadout screen will tell you if custom loadouts are available if it is an aircraft that you own, you can just look at the bottom left hand corner of the screen and it'll have the options to create a loadout or modify them or whatever. So that's easy enough. In order to create a new loadout, all you have to do is hit the create button and then you just go through and you can drag and drop uh, any weapon you want for each individual slot. That's pretty straightforward. That's not to say you can literally do whatever you want. There are some limitations on the loadout system. So. Each plane will effectively have a maximum weight that it can carry total. Additionally, there will also be a certain amount of asymmetry weight, because you can have different weapons on different parts of the plane. So the maximum weight is actually pretty high for most planes. There's only a small number of them that you can actually overload. The majority, you can kind of put whatever you want and it won't be too heavy. For the asymmetry, however, a lot of planes can have asymmetry problems if you overload one side of the plane without putting anything else in the other. However, generally speaking, you're probably going to build most of your loadouts symmetrical anyway, as there aren't a lot of huge advantages to asymmetry. There are going to be some other limitations that are specific to an aircraft. For example, if we look at the F-4 Phantom, you'll notice we have the AIM-9 Sidewinders above the bombs which means they're on the same pylon, even though they're two separate options in the loadout menu. However, if we go to the AGM-65s, the Mavericks, the Mavericks are on a pylon that doesn't allow for the Sidewinders. So even though there's technically two separate slots in the loadout, because they both go on the same part of the plane and they're not compatible, you can't use the Sidewinders with the Mavericks like you can use the Sidewinders with the triple 1,000 pound bombs. Now, the game doesn't require you to remember all of these limitations or know like the specific stats. It will actually tell you if a loadout won't work, but it's just important to keep this in mind, especially if you're planning out for uh, weapons that you haven't necessarily unlocked yet with the aircraft. One thing you might want to do with loadouts, even though it isn't necessary, is you might want to rename them, uh, just so you have some idea as to what they do or what they are, and you can go with very bland and not very interesting names, or you can just do whatever the hell you want, the game doesn't really care, this is more just for your reference. One other thing I would highly recommend doing is marking as favorite some of the loader loadouts that you've created. What that does, it will put them at the top instead of the bottom. Why they start at the bottom anyway, I don't know, because pretty much every other game I've played, like Call of Duty, your custom loadouts will be before the default loadouts, but this game does it the opposite way, so if you want to have your loadouts easier to access while you're selecting them from the spawn screen, I would definitely go back and favorite all of the ones that you plan on using. Now as far as helicopters with custom loadouts, helicopters work exactly like planes. Uh, you can create loadouts, modify them the same way. They also have the same restrictions. Now, helicopter restrictions don't seem to be that big of a deal because it's actually quite difficult to create asymmetric or too heavy loadouts. In fact, the only one I could find was using the Russian 500 kilogram bombs, but yet otherwise they do generally just behave the same and you create them the same. Now, if you can just throw everything on the aircraft, the question is, why wouldn't you want to? And the reason is mostly revolving around weight and drag. Ultimately, adding weapons to an aircraft isn't ever truly free. It always costs you something, whether it be flight performance or in the case of ground battle spawn points. So it is important to keep in mind that you never want to take more than you actually think you're going to use on a given mission. So now that we've covered the basics of custom loadouts, how to create them, all that good stuff, what we're going to go into next is how different weapons affect your spawn costs in a ground realistic battle if you want to spawn these uh, aircraft as cast options. And the first thing we're going to look at, because it's obviously a lot simpler, are helicopters. 
So helicopters only realistically have two spawn costs. The spawn costs will be modified up or down based on whether it's a max down tier or a max up tier, etc, etc. But the first spawn cost will cover every weapon on the helicopter except for anti-tank guided missiles. You can throw whatever you want on it, it will never go up in spawn costs. These include rockets, guns, uh, bombs, etc. The second spawn cost is exclusively for anti-tank guided missiles. If you include even one anti-tank guided missile, it will automatically go up to the second spawn cost. However, it will never go higher no matter how many other anti-tank missiles or other weapons you include on it. So for example, there's no spawn cost difference between the Israeli Lahat with a single uh, TOW-2 versus an Apache with 16 Hellfires and three, four Stingers. Is, so you essentially only have two values. You either have anti-tank missiles or you don't have anti-tank missiles, and that's all you really have to bear in mind. However, it is important to realize that weight is a factor. Uh, for example, the Israeli Zephyr, one of the earlier Cobras that can take anti-tank missiles, if you get it, both the ITOs and the Mighty and the FFAR rockets, it becomes incredibly heavy. The engine is quite underpowered to where it really struggles to gain altitude. So I usually don't take the Zephyr with the rocket pods, even though I technically could and it wouldn't adjust the spawn cost. So just something to keep in mind when you're looking at helicopters. Now before we start with the plane spawn points, it's important to realize that plane spawn points have a ceiling. Once you hit this ceiling, you basically can't ever uh, increase your spawn costs unless you include specific types of weapons or unless you add belts to guns. So once you've included, say, six 1,000 pound bombs, you're at the ceiling, you can staple whatever you want on the aircraft and it won't ever increase the spawn costs. However, there are specific types of weapons that have their own spawn costs that, much like the helicopter or ATGMs, as soon as you equip them, you are instantly set to a higher spawn cost and you can't go higher or lower from that point. So bear that in mind. Unlike helicopters, planes, however, are significantly more involved in terms of how different weapons affect their spawn costs. Now, the first thing we're going to cover is effectively the free items. These are gun pods, targeting pods, and uh, counter measure pods. These don't increase your spawn costs at all. However, adding ammunition belts can increase your spawn costs. And ammunition belts can even increase your spawn costs above some of the other ceilings we're gonna find later. And it also stacks. So if you were to take an A-10 and you were to add an ammo belt for a 20 millimeter gun pod and an ammo belt for its own 30 millimeter cannon, you would add over 300 spawn points to the A-10 which you could basically get Mavericks for that spawn cost. So in terms of gun pods, I would definitely try to uh, think very long and hard about whether or not you actually need the specialized ammunition versus the basic ammunition. Additionally, I ran into a small oddity with uh, how the belts are costed. So as you can see on the F4, whenever I did the ammo belt without any other weapons equipped, the ammo belt cost 159 extra spawn pods. On the other hand, as soon as I equipped the gun pods and then equipped a specialized ammo belt, it went down to 158. I'm not really sure why, and it's not like game breaking that it costs one extra spawn point, but it doesn't really make any sense to me. I think the only reason it does this is because both the main gun on the F4 and the gun pods are using the same ammo belts, so it has a bit of a heart attack when it has to figure that out. But that's just kind of a weird thing that doesn't really, I don't know, it doesn't affect anything, it's just odd. Now as we go into the spawn cost of the stuff that's not free, one thing that I did notice as a very consistent pattern is there's effectively an extra stuff tax placed whenever you throw multiple things on an airframe. That is to say, if you throw two 1,000 pound bombs on a plane, the spawn cost will be higher than the combined spawn cost of those bombs. So I'm not sure if it's based on hard points or number of weapons, but it, it is non-linear in terms of how your spawn cost increases as you add more items. Now, as far as the various bombs, like I don't want to just throw a bunch of numbers at you because honestly, it wouldn't be that useful because the uh, costs actually vary based on whether it's a down tier or an up tier. It seems to be that the bombs are a percentage of the maximum that you can have. So there is going to be some variance in there. However, there are some general rules. So what I noticed very quickly, um, and I'm going to throw up the values here for the 250, the 500, the 750, and the 1000 in a specific matchup. One thing you see very clearly is that the 250 and the 500 have basically the same spawn cost. They're only a little bit apart. However, as I added more bombs, this like disparity actually opened up. 
What I think is going on here is that there's a hidden stat that it's using to apply a spawn cost to the bombs. And on top of that, there's also a floor. Like once you get to around 20 spawn points, it actually compresses a lot because it doesn't want to give a huge advantage to taking a ton of little bombs versus like one lip, one uh, relatively modest bomb. So I do like the system is actually a little smarter than you think it is and that it's harder to come up with an exploit of taking lots of smaller bombs. But as soon as you start to apply like large numbers of bombs, like four or five or six, that's when you start to see a much bigger separation in the spawn costs. Additionally, the system does account for guidance. The 1,000 pound uh, laser guided bombs, the 1,000 pound AGM-62s, the optically guided bombs, and the basic dumb 1,000 pound bombs all had slightly different spawn costs with the guided bombs being slightly more expensive. That being said, I still think the guided bombs are way more efficient, especially because the guided bombs often drop individually instead of in pairs, so you can much more easily get kills with them, making them still a better option even though they are slightly more expensive. Which neatly brings us into our other little oddity. So I was evaluating the F-80C versus some other aircraft around its battle rating to see if the game gave you any discounts for uh, having a paired drop where you bo drop both bombs at once versus dropping them individually. Because obviously dropping them at once is just simply worse. It, so it turns out the system doesn't give you any discount for having paired drops. However, for some reason on the F-80C, the custom loadout I created with two bombs was actually slightly cheaper in spawn cost than the default loadout with the exact same bombs on the exact same hardpoint. I have no idea what's happening here. It very well might be a bit of a rounding error because as I said it seems to do percentages of your total loadout, but it does indicate that custom loadouts are actually calculated slightly differently than the default loadouts, which means you should probably always build custom loadouts even if a default loadout is available with those same weapons. So in terms of rockets, they don't behave that dissimilarly from bombs. They do seem to have a floor around the 20 spawn point area, and the cheap rockets, you technically get a lot of them, so they're cheap per rocket, but they still require more hits. Uh, they do have better range, so in general for their explosive mass, they tend to be more expensive than bombs, but overall there weren't any like noticeable exploits on rockets. The best rockets seem to be small numbers of the American Zuni rockets, something to that effect where you're a medium weight rocket that can reliably kill most targets, especially if you have a ballistic computer. So overall, rockets are a pretty good cheap investment, but they're not exactly the best option. Now, anti-tank guided missiles on planes are actually handled somewhat similarly to how they are handled on helicopters. Essentially what you have is, once you equip even one anti-tank guided missile of a certain type, you now get raised instantly to a spawn cost category where you can equip as many or as few of those anti-tank missiles as you want. You'll always have the same spawn cost and as many other weapons as you want. So this is kind of interesting, but what's really changes planes versus helicopters is planes actually have at least two distinct categories. One of them was for Nords and Bullpups, the kind of earlier anti-tank guided missiles. The spawn cost for these was higher than the ceiling, but not to a huge amount. And then you had the Mavericks. Mavericks were in their own separate spawn cost category, and they were almost double the spawn cost of the normal ceiling for spawn cost for planes. In fact, a plane with Mavericks is one of the most expensive things you could spawn in the game. Um, they easily racked up close to like 800, even close to 1,000 spawn points if you start including extra ammo belts for guns. So anti-tank guided missiles are effective, but tend to be incredibly expensive to spawn, and thus aren't really a cheap option. Now in terms of air-to-air -air missiles, what's really interesting is how it treats the IR missiles, the Sidewinders. So in terms of the Sidewinders, if you equip even one, it will cost 14 or 15 points usually, it kind of depends on whether it's a down tier or an up tier. However, equipping the second one won't cost you any more points. It's basically designed to be equipped in pairs. So there's no point in ever equipping only one Sidewinder, at least as long as you're trying to be efficient in terms of your spawn costs. However, the third, fourth, fifth, etc., that's when you start seeing the increases. As far as the other air to air missiles and even the spawn costs with the Sidewinder, the biggest pattern I saw was that it seems to depend on range. Like, the range of the missile is the number one factor in determining how much it costs. 
In fact, easily the most expensive missile was the AIM-54 Phoenix. The AIM-54 Phoenix was also the only air-to-air -air missile that could take you above the ceiling, or not above the ceiling, but take you up to the ceiling for spawn points. So it's kind of interesting to note that what you should probably try to use if you're trying to do efficient loadouts is you should go for missiles that have the lowest range that still effectively works. So something like an AIM-7DF will be noticeably cheaper than an AIM-7F and will do mostly the same jobs in a ground RB match. Interestingly, because the uh, AIM-9Ls have slightly shorter range than the Gs, they actually tend to be a hair cheaper, but not to the point where it will really matter. So just one thing to keep in mind for air-to-air -air weapons. So wrapping things up, the spawn cost system is noticeably smarter than I thought it would be going into this video and going into doing all the research and that you do have kind of the floor at around 20 spawn points. You also have the sidewinders that are designed to be equipped in pairs, a bunch of that stuff. But then it's also dumber than I thought it would be in that it somehow gives you a discount if you equip the same type of ammo to two weapons instead of one. And somehow you can get lower spawn points with uh, custom loadouts than with normal loadouts. but Overall, the system works more often than it doesn't, and doesn't have a lot of crazy exploits. But I did have to revisit some of my loadouts after researching this. For example, the F-80C in particular, because its bombs use paired drops. I went back and trimmed a lot of its loadouts down to just one 1,000-pound uh, bomb, because you're just wasting the spawn points for the second one. Um, additionally, a lot of my air-to-air -air loadouts, especially on things like the Phantoms, I changed them around. I only use two Sidewinders now. I trimmed the uh, AIM-7s down to the DF models because they have the same range, but they're noticeably cheaper, all that stuff. So overall, it was useful to go through, not any big revelations, but it was interesting. And I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you had fun, I hope you learned something. Uh, go ahead and drop your uh, favorite loadouts in the comments down below, and if you found this entertaining and educational, give me a like, comment, and subscribe. That would always be appreciated. Have a nice day, everybody!